Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing excellent. Jeff and I just discovered a pretty ingenious way of pressing out some bushings. It requires a trip to AutoZone and a impact gun. And we're gonna show you how we did it. Here we have the FC's S4 subframe that we're putting in. And to go with this subframe, I have some new goodies which we'll show you in a minute. But they're bushings. Um, we wanna replace the subframe bushing. So this one, we just got out, didn't we? Yes, we did. We tested this off camera just to see if it would work. So here's what we used. This is a simple two ton puller you can rent from O'Reilly and you can put it in a two or three configuration. So we put it in a two, took a closed end lug nut, which it almost pushed through, so we'll see. A washer, place that on top here, like so. And then we get this locked in here. So we put that puller piece down in there and this becomes a press. So let's see if we're lucky enough on this side as well. Oh, and of course, <laughs> the impact wrench. So let me get it set up here. Oh, we need to wait for the compressor. All right, so we apply, whew, burnt rubber. We apply some heat there, but then we take, and hopefully this works while we're on camera, take our impact to full. Smells like we did a burnout. To full yeet mode. Get her on here. Make sure your sandals are on. And then. <laughs> that time it did not work. I think we broke the lug nut. I think we did too. You lugged it into the lug nuts. Is it hot? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that side's really hot. But yeah, it, it went through it right there. Okay. Well, we got another one right here. But those are... So what? We got extras. Let me reset this and we'll try again. Okay, take two. Seems like unequal force that time it popped it up. Yep, it came up on this side. Got a washer there. Okay. Looks like that really snuck come oh, off yeah, on that. I see that. Well, that's how it looked on the other one when it came out. Okay. Yeah. Nope. Broken. Damn down. it. Broken our lug nut. Did? Yep. Okay. Yep, and that's why I just gave up. Yep. Yeah. Oh, dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. All right, everyone, I'm back. So, just a reminder, where is it? We got this bushing out of the subframe from right over there using a smaller version of this. So I went and exchanged it. This is a puller, but what we're doing is we're putting it onto the subframe latching it on and using it to push, try and push out the bushing. So here we're having trouble with it slipping off right here. You can see it marred it up a little bit. So I'm gonna try this bigger one with bigger hooks to see if we can get it to pull that out. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up, leave you on the head cam and see if I can get this one pushed out. If I can't get these to work, I did buy another tool, which is right here, an air hammer to see if we can do that because I am determined to get these bushings out and the new ones in. Okay, here we go. Damn it. Okay, it's locked on there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and heat it just to give it some extra help. Oh, 
Okay, let's see. Will she come? Uh, that's a negative. All right, so I've been experimenting with setting up the air hammer for a little bit because I had to tune in the uh, pressure that it runs off of. And it does take quite a bit of doing. As you can see here, I've pretty much marred and pulled away quite a big portion of it. But as you can see here, it's starting to come out. And I can see up here, it's finally starting to move. So this will work. This will get us there. So I just got to keep working at it. Number two. Two more to go. Okay, great. So my ears are ringing and I got all four. So these are not in terrible condition, but you know, after this much time and just general age of rubber, it's time to service them. These ones were in much worse condition. These are the diff mounts, <clears throat> which is more common because these get more flex if you lose the front diff mount, which I have and replaced it, but didn't replace these diff bushings. And this one was completely separated. And in addition, we're gonna be in this video putting in the pinion snubber, which is a, um, I need to flip this over, I'll do that in a second, which is a rubber bushing piece that we're gonna add into the chassis that's gonna allow it to not flex up as much so it won't get that play in the differential. This is where the drive shaft comes in. At that joint, when it gets torque, it lifts up and basically bangs against the floorboards if it's gone, but also just puts unnecessary torque and delay in the delivery of power. So we're gonna be fixing that as well. So with the air hammer, I gotta say, this is um, 15 bucks that Harbor Freight comes with this chisel. Worked great. And um, all I can say is just be patient with it. Put it at the right setting so it's not too powerful and just keep working around, working around, working around and they come out. So now is the challenge of pressing the new ones in. Okay, exciting. Got the subframe and diff flipped over. I actually went ahead and cleaned up the inside of these. So I even used a little file where there was any uh, rough spots in here, clean those out. And same here, clean these out. There was uh, you know a little bit of rust, which is expected, um, but they're in pretty good condition. Just a few places to file to make them nice and smooth. Now let me show you what I got to replace these old bushings there. Are these bunch of bags labeled Mazda Genuine Parts. Very excited about this. So these are the Mazda Speed stiffness rubber pieces that are a step up from the stock ones, which you can still order through um, Atkins Rotary or Mazda Tricks. They still have a few, which is really cool. That is what this is. So long ago, this front diff mount, 
um, split in the middle, which is really common. And I replaced it with a competition level mount. And so now I'll have all the other, other rubber to mount uh, to match it. And also I even got, these are the pieces that bolt underneath the diff right here and hold that up. And I got the competition level brand new stiffness with those. So this should really refresh and liven up the rear suspension in addition with the great um, suspension that we already have with from Fortunato. So I'm excited to get this all installed. Now, um, to install these, obviously they're press fit. So I've got to figure out what's the best method to get these installed. And I think that is where I'm going to use this puller as a pusher again. So I'm going to get my setup to try and install them all prepared. I'm probably going to install one of them to see if my plan works and go from there. And I'll be back in just a moment. So this crazy situation here is how I just successfully pressed in the first bushing right over here. So let me show you what's going on. I don't have a press. What I do have is this tubing bender, which is basically a press um, upside down. So I flipped the subframe, put it on the engine hoist so I can maneuver it around. And as you can see, I have where I need to press the bushing trapped right in here. The only tricky part is that this is the 12 ton hydraulic jack that comes with the press here. And um, it's too tall, so I can't maneuver the bushing on top of it and get it into this space here. So I was like, well, that's great. I have this eight ton, eight ton hydraulic jack they've had for years. Went to use it and it doesn't work. It only goes up this far. And then if you press on it, it goes down. So this is trash. So when I returned that puller, I went ahead and picked up a new bottle jack because, you know, I doubt this is the one time we're going to do a project like this on more garage. So anyway, here's the old bushing and you can see the difference in size and why it's so difficult to press it in because it crushes into place and it has quite a bit to go through. So it's not something you can slide in or hammer in like uh, S, S chassis subframe bushings. Um, you can just burn them out and then uh, press them in with some lubricant, but these have steel walls and again, this is the stiffer style. So I already put a bunch of grease on the inside of this hole um, for the bushing and that's obviously to help a little bit in assembly, but it's also to make it uh, watertight as much as possible because you don't want, some of this grease is obviously going to squeeze out because it's such a tight fit, but you just don't want water getting into this area because then you just have a great place to trap and have it rust out. So we're going to go ahead and throw this in here. Nice and greased up. Very good. And then um, what I'm using on top of this jack is the old um, diff bushing holder. So I just put this side down and you can see it's a nice fit. So the new ones are over there. Got this one right here. So I just take my jack. So just get this adjusted to the right height to fit in under here. There we go. And then just start jacking it up. So let's see here. Get everything nice and centered. It's already starting to go in. I can see it. There we go. So I need to let this down a little bit because you can see now that this is pushed here, the engine hoist is holding the thingy off the ground. So just. There we go. And 
to reposition this a little bit. Okay. And you can see right down here, the bushing is going in. Oh, that looks great. And it's in, and then just a little extra for good measure. Beautiful. Pressed it in. Lovely. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Get the jack to go down. Yep, and it's pressed in on all sides. Okay, so now I have to move to the back. The difficult part is gonna be, this is interfering. So I think I do have to take these off. I was trying to avoid it. But if I do that, I should just be able to swing it out of the way. To use this thing, gotta spin this all around. So I'll be back to show you that in just a moment. Looking good. Here we go. Now we're pressing the bushing. Okay, finally got that one. That one was a bit of a challenge. All right, so I didn't film pressing in the last bushing. Um, a friend stopped by and we were just chit-chatting while I was working, but with that crazy contraption I made, we did get everything in. So it was these two and those two up there. So that's great. I also went ahead and grabbed the sway bar off the S4 um, and grabbed these S4 style end links, which are much more desirable than the kind of tie rod style end links that come on the S5. And uh, in case anyone's wondering, these have polyurethane bushings, these are polyurethane bushings, there's DTSS eliminators in these hubs here, and where is it? These, I painted on them, but these are polyurethane in here as well, and I'm not sure about these links here, can't remember if I changed them a long time ago, but just so you know, we have new Mazda Speed Competition rubber in the bushings, polyurethane, everything else with no DTSS, and we have the 1.5 way clutch type LSD. So that's why we're going through all this trouble to swap this in. So I got on the casters ready to go and swap it in. But the next piece of this puzzle is, as I was mentioning before, and I'm gonna repeat myself because I'm gonna chop up a portion of this video to make a little vignette um, on just doing the pinion snub install because a lot of people have asked about that um, since I mentioned it before and when I've looked around, all I can find is old forum posts, so hopefully this is helpful. So basically, I'm not sure where, but underneath the car on the, on the body, this is gonna mount in there and it's gonna sit somewhere along here. And so what that's gonna do is it's gonna stop. So here, obviously, the U-joint comes in and the drive shaft mounts to here. And when you hit power, since it's flexible, it will kick up and it causes damage to this bracket here, which a lot of people reinforce with welding on uh, gussets and so on. And then this diff mount breaks a lot of the time and then it gets real bad. You can hear it dung dung against the bottom of your car. So to fix that, we're gonna be installing a pinion snubber. And then what that's gonna do is keep this whole assembly nice and level. It's gonna make it more predictable under power. If you wanna do quick gear changes, even if you wanted to do a clutch kick or drop it and do a burnout, it's not gonna kick up nearly as much. This is polyurethane as well. This product comes from, is it here? <coughs> Energy suspension as well, which is where all these other polyurethane bushings come from. And it actually came with two, which is great because I have two FCs. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on that installation right now, and then we'll go ahead and throw the subframe up. Okay, so we're gonna come inside into the back where the storage bins would be. Now, I have the storage bins out. Don't mind all this wiring. I'm gonna be cleaning it up and I have this fuse block here. But with the interior out, I figure obviously it's a very easy and better time to do this. So right here, this is where obviously the transmission sits in here, drive shaft, connects back here and this should be the front of the differential and the rear 
um, subframe mounts right in here. So all the information I found says that right here is this little dimple and that's where you drill a 3 8 inch hole and install this pinion snubber. So um, we're going to go ahead and just drill a hole in the bottom of the car now. So let's see. Hopefully this is the correct location. Okay, well I didn't hit anything, so that looks correct. So what I'm gonna do right now is put a little bit of uh, primer, or not primer, um, rust steel paint in there so that there's no exposed metal. And then we'll be back once it's dry so we can continue with the installation. And let's provide a view from underneath so you can see. Uh-huh, yep. So here is the hole that was drilled. So still waiting for that paint to dry, but that's where she's going to come out, right there. Okay, so we're ready to start installing this thing. So luckily Jeff is home because I'm going to have to be underneath the car sticking this thing through and you're going to have to put a nut on it. But one of the things you need to have are some fender washers. And these are 3 8 um, by an inch and a half. It's recommended in most write-ups to have 2 inch because as you can see, there's a little bit around. I think it's gonna be just fine, and I wanted to get, I need to get this install done because I need to get the subframe in. Um, so I think these will suffice, and there, you wanna put a few on the bottom because you want the depth to be correct as like a preload so that it is pressed against it just to begin with and have enough room for compression. And then you put some on top, probably just one, so that you are bolting down to a stronger surface than just bolting right into the chassis and having this thing flex just on that one point and just come right through. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with two. Now, just as a note, this can be serviced without taking the whole subframe out. You just undo the bolts there and um, loosen the link that comes right down here and then you can drop this enough to do this without taking this whole thing off your car but we have it out so we're going to do it like so so jeffrey here's the nut i will shimmy underneath here oh. where's it going out now in there so you're going to want to get inside that hole in the middle ah got it right yeah there. Got, it, got it got it Okay, here we are. All right, wash it over. Yep, thank you. And yeah, it's locking, so it's going to be a little difficult right. to tighten it. But um, yeah, it's yeah, it's locked. I need to, but it's there. You're good. Okay. Perfect. All right. So now we'll continue with sliding this in underneath the car and getting it all bolted up. Okay. So we have successfully got the subframe back in position. I want to try and sneak under here and look at the pinion snub situation real quick so let's see if at great danger to myself i can see it the answer is mostly no well i can see it i do not know if the gopro will see it but i'll stick it in there in just a second okay here take it off my head and that should have it in picture. You can see him shining the light on it. It's that rubber thing up in there. So it appears to be pressing on the diff. Uh, it, no, it's not. No? Not yet. Let's see. I can see it right here. Oh, you can? Yeah. Oh, no, because I can see the nut is not... Propped up. Propped up. Yeah, okay. It's not against it yet. Okay. Maybe we have to jack up the sides and everything in here too, you know? Well, I think the, the diff in the back can go up more as well. But in the front here, I my bushings are touched up against the deal. 
So I think we might need a few more washers. So we're gonna go ahead and go with three additional ones, which is all of the ones that I have, because Jeff's saying he was able to fit like the almost the entire width of a wrench uh, in between there. So hopefully that does it. So I'm gonna go back underneath and put this in. Subframe's all the way back in, looking great, but we had to back it out a little bit because once we got everything completely tightened down, the pinion snubber device was not touching. So, I know this looks wacky. I think it's gonna be okay, but we added some more spacers and a pretty aggressive amount because as long as it goes up when we tighten everything up, we're right where we wanna be. So, we're gonna go ahead and try and squeeze this in from below again. We finally got it to the point where, try and push it up and down there, Jeff. Doesn't go up and down, thank goodness. So can you try and take what's left of this cutoff wheel and make the groove deeper? Groove deeper. So Jeff, Jeff got that groove deep enough. Now we're gonna try and tighten it down before I Put the subframe back in place just in case it kind of straightens itself out. Okay, she 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 pretty good in there. Okay, excellent. Okay, very good. Now we will finish tightening up the subframe apparatus and then we're pretty much done. Well, well, well. We still need to get the brake rotors on and get it on the caster so we can move it around. And bolt the suspension back on. Yeah, on your side. But we are making some great progress and we worked from the front back removing everything and we're working from the back to the front. So in the previous video we got the fuel pump in there, we got the fuel lines ran, we got the new Subframe on tonight. I mean, what do you think about what we're doing? It's a lot like everything except for the color of the car is changing. <laughs> That's true. Uh, all the wiring, all the bushings, everything rubber, all the fuel lines. Um, you know, that's all being changed out. So it's a, it's a big project. It's a really big one. Bigger than the first one was. Yeah, and I feel like we're doing it better this time. I feel like the first time was almost like a dry run where we were learning how to do things. Yeah, well that was. that was. There was so much learning involved in that first one that we know how to do this time. Yeah, and I mean, if you saw in the video how we're like jerry-rigging everything, if you saw previous videos, I got a 13B and a wheelbarrow. I made a random press out of a pipe bender and a bottle jack. But I mean, we got a lot accomplished. We've got the S4 subframe in with the 1.5 way LSD. We've got the DTSS eliminators in now. We've got all polyurethane bushings. Mm -hmm. We've got Mazda Speed OEM, brand new diff and subframe bushings, which are the competition level. Yes. We've got the diff uh, mount is already the Mazda competition yeah, mount. The competition, yeah. And now we got a pinion snubber to hold everything in place. Mm -hmm. that, that's a lot. That's honestly huge. Yeah, that's huge. So I think that'll do it for this one. <sighs> Does it get cleaned? Hopefully the lens was clean enough that whole time, but it's going to do it for this one. There's going to be two videos that come out with this, which is just going to be the diff subframe, the whole process, and then a smaller vignette, which is just going to be just the pinion snubber. I'm going to link that to some forums, but it's going to have the same outro. So if you're watching just from the pinion snubber, hey, check out the whole build. If you're watching and staying along for the whole build, thank you so much. Please remember to click the link in the description below if you have not already signed the RPM Act to protect our cars and cars like this one. Stay kind to each other out there. And when they ask you, tell them you want more.